Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a really fun card for you. This is a light up card featuring the new adorable adventure set from My Favorite Things, part of the brand new release. This is a special card. I actually made this for my husband for our anniversary. We like to go camping and actually he proposed to me when we were out on the trail and that's what this card reminds me of. I am not the only one playing with light up cards today. Head on over to the MFT blog and you will see a lot of designers using easy lights to make some light up cards and there are some prizes so make sure you check that out. But let's just dive in and, and I'll show you what I use to make this card and then I'll show you how to assemble it. This is the new adorable adventure set, super cute. I stamped out my images with extreme black ink and then I Copic colored them. I used the coordinating dies to cut them out and that's what I'm going to build my scene with. We are going to color the background together, but I want to show you a couple things. On the mountains, I added a little bit of sparkle just up at the top for the snow caps. And then on the um, bushes there, I have one bush that I have stamped the words push here on. Uh, that's going to cover up the button of our easy light. So, you, you know, you want to indicate that. I used a heavy doodle set, but my favorite things has a set as well. So you can grab that. We're going to Copic color the sunset and the two layers of the, um, like the ground layers. And I'm using the under the sea set. There's a wave in there to cut the two layers apart. I have stitched hillsides and I didn't want any stitching to show. So that's why I grabbed that wave die. I'm going to use a circle die to cut out the window in our card front. I've already gone ahead and nested two together and cut out two frames, but we want to kind of create a window there. And I do want to emboss my sentiments in white so that that'll match the frames and the outline of all of my little die cut images. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut that panel down. For my sunset background, I, I can have it straight. That's not a problem because neither one of those edges will show. And for the two hillside layers, I'm just going to use that wave die cut uh, that piece basically in half there and that gives me one kind of going up and one going down and that'll just give me just different layers for my horizon there and I just wanted to check and make sure they fit in the circle and they do and then now we can start Copic coloring so I've grabbed some markers and I just I, I grabbed a whole bunch of different colors there but I wanted to kind of match them or at least make them coordinate with the images that I've already colored and cut out. So I'll keep those images next to me just for reference. And then you can see uh, for the first layer, the, the ground that's closest to the, the characters that they're, they're standing on, I've just grabbed some different E markers and I'm very quickly going through this. I sped this up about five times just because I'm just kind of going over it a couple different times and I'm not trying to be perfect. Most of this will get covered up or cut off. So you're not going to see it a lot of it anyhow, but we want a little bit of a, a ground underneath them and we want some texture. So I just kind of went back and forth and then added some dots. Um, I decided that I wanted uh, slightly darker dots too. So, um, in addition to the, the brown markers there, I just grabbed a black Copic multi-liner. That one gives me nice tiny little dots. I think that's a 0 0.3. Um, and that just, just added a little more texture. Now for the next layer, I want it to kind of be dark at the bottom and then uh, fade up into the light like that blue violet, the, the same sort of purples that are on my mountains there. So I grabbed a couple green markers and then a couple of the different blue violets. And I'm going to use those green markers to add in just a little bit of grass on our first sandy layer there. And then I'm going to kind of draw um, a horizon for the second layer with my greens. Um, and I I'm just adding a little more detail to the grass there. In fact, most of this ends up getting covered up <laughs> and I have to draw it in again at the end. Um, so after I get my green layer down on the second um, panel, I'm going to come in with the blue violets. So I've got the darkest down at the bottom. I've got a medium and then a light and I'll just kind of work it all the way up to the top. And you can see I needed to add a little bit more there. It, it's not quite, um, I need, I need to bring that green down a little bit more and give myself a little bit 
a little more room to work with. So I just did the same thing, brought the colors down and then took them all the way back up again. And that's gonna give me a nice kind of fade into the horizon there. And it matches the mountains nicely, so I like that. Now we can work on the sunset. So this is the, uh, the really pretty part. And I actually considered doing all of this with my distress inks and um, ink blending it, but look at how many colors I'm using. I'd never be able to get that many colors of distress ink in a, such a tiny little panel. I think it's maybe two inches tall. So I have got uh, just a handful there. I've got basically a whole rainbow. I've got four shades of yellow, I've got an orange, a red, a couple of pinks, purples, and blues, and I just want to kind of bring those all in and make them a nice, bright, beautiful sunset there. So what I'm going to do is kind of line everything up and then determine where the sun will be. And I'll use my lightest yellow marker to just draw a set like a, a dot there, and then I can start going around it with my other colors. So I'm just gonna go quick and dirty, right on top, you know, just around, and then I'll come back and do a second layer in a minute, but this is just kind of giving me the outline. And you can see I go in sort of rainbow order there, I'll take my darkest blue on the outer edges, most of that doesn't end up getting seen at all because of the circle um, but I, I want to make it nice in case you see from any like an angle underneath um, and again don't worry about the edges because those will be completely hidden and I just come back in you can see once I come back in with the second layer it really starts to come together and it softens out and one color blends into the next and it ends up looking like a, a pretty sunset here well, disregard the edges because we're going to cut those off. <laughs> but the rest of it looks nice. And you can see when we layer it up um, that the colors, they work nicely together. And we've got that nice bright yellow sun right in the middle there. So I'm liking how this is looking. And then now, before we get too far, I want to do my stamping and embossing. Um, it's always easier when you just have the one layer. So I'm going to take the card front, and that card front is a little bit smaller than A2 size. I think I cut off um, a quarter inch from the top and one side, so that'll give me an eighth inch border all the way around. I've grabbed the circle die that I'm going to cut the window from, and I'll line that up so that I can uh, figure out the spacing for my sentiment. And once I've got that ready, I can come in and use my powder tool and some Versamark ink to stamp the um, the sentiment there and the uh, powder tool is helpful if you don't have one of these you you definitely want one if you do any embossing um, I switched over from the EK success one to this bag and I'm getting much better results so I really do like this one um, I've got my white embossing powder and I just quickly embossed that sentiment there and I can wipe off any extra powder and then that guy is ready to get cut um, while I've got everything out, it's a good time to stamp the rest, the inside of my card, because once I layer everything on top, it'll get a little bit thick. So now is a good time to do that, plus everything's out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment inside. I also went ahead and stamped and embossed the little um, the sign post there, and then the two little uh, sub sentiments inside that says adventure this way um, th that set actually has several different little little words that will fit in the sign so it's, it's pretty fun you can mix and match so once I have that embossed I can come back to my card front and now I'm just gonna line up that circle tape it down and run it through my die cutting machine and that gives me my window and you can see I store my dies on little magnetic sheets and any extra pieces I can just tuck into the back of the pocket. So now we can go ahead and start gluing things together. I'm gonna glue the uh, white frames onto the opening. And I believe it was three and a half inches is the smaller circle and three and three quarters is the outer circle there to make my frame. And I stacked up two. You can go higher if you want, but 
we're going to have some height because of the lights. So I'm going to have uh, foam tape underneath. So I don't want to go too high with that. But I did want the frame to, to pop up a little bit. So that's why I have two layers. And then now I'm going to determine where the back that sunset panel is going to sit on the card and it's a little bit wider than my frame because remember I trimmed it down a little bit um, so I am just uh, trimming it down figuring out where it's going to sit and then I can grab my pencil and I'll mark the edges just so that when I lift it up and add glue to the back I know where to stick it back down um, makes it easier to do that and then I'll stick it down. I do prefer wet glue for this. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room and it, it seems to hold up nice and strong. So I'm a, a PVA glue fan. Now I'm just checking the layers and I'm gonna start lining up all my scenery pieces too. And we'll just kind of fast forward a little bit there. Um, so I, I've figured out the placement for the rocks and my mountains and then I can um, start gluing these down as well. And I'm just gluing them flat, no foam tape or anything on any of these pieces. The three separate layers will be separated by foam tape. So there's gonna be elevation that way. So I don't wanna elevate the rocks or the bushes or anything like that because we already have enough other layers going on in this card. Once I get my rocks down, then I can glue my mountains to the second layer and they're, they're poking up a little bit. So I'm just going to add glue along the bottom and then I can lay that scenery piece, the, uh, I guess you call it hillside, <laughs> um, along the, the bottom there, pick up those mountains. And then I can trim off the sides of these ones because these are also a little bit too wide. And then we're going to add on a few other pieces. Our trees can get glued on next to the um, layer with the mountains. And they stick up above the horizon. So I'm just adding glue to the bottom portion of the trees. I don't want to accidentally glue it down to the sunset. And then now we can get our characters in place. And so this card, I love these two characters because um, it kind of looks like he's down on his knee. And when my husband proposed to me, we were actually out on a hike. And so he kind of surprised me. He got down on his knee when we stopped so I could get a breath of air. <laughs> um, and, and he proposed while we were on a hike. So when I saw these two little characters and how their hands can kind of match up, it reminded me of that. So that's kind of the scene that I'm trying to create with this card here and actually our anniversary is coming up and we're going camping again so <laughs> the card is perfect because it uh it'll just work all the way around so i'll glue my two little characters together i want one bush kind of in front of her feet just to you know add some depth to the scene there and then now i want to glue that top layer where the characters are to the frame so I'm just going to put a, like a crescent of glue there and then I'll pick it up with the frame. And I want to make sure that her head doesn't stick up so high that she covers the sunset because that's kind of the point of the card. And then now we can start adding um, lights. And if you haven't seen easy lights before, well, they are really easy. They come in a panel, uh, multi-pack. This is a five-pack, so I just kind of broke one off. They just snap apart and then uh, separate it. They come with batteries, and you're just going to take your battery and you just slip it inside, press the button, and it works. It's just like a flashlight, except in this case it has three lights instead of one light. And that little purple dot is your button. So super simple, you just tape them down, cover them up, and you have lights. What I wanna do is mark where the purple button is going to sit on my card base. So I hovered my pencil right over the words push here, and then I slid that out of the way and marked it. 
Now I can take a piece of strong double-sided tape, this is super tape, and I will put it on the back of the easy light, just over the battery there. I can line up that purple dot where I want it to say push here. And then in this case, instead of separating the three lights and using them spread out, I want them all to be clustered together to be like a bright sun. So I'm gonna nestle them on the back of those mountains there, just right in the valley between those two um, that are in the center there. And I'm going to use foam tape to hold them. So I'm going to just quickly add some foam tape to the back portion of this panel. I'm not going to go all the way down because I don't want to run into the battery pack there. I don't want foam tape to stick onto the battery pack. I want it to be flush with that. And then I'll grab my three lights and I've already removed all of the um, release paper on the back of the foam tape there. And I'll nestle those lights right there in the center. I like the way that looks. And then the extra wire, normally I coil it up, but I have a lot of space available to me here. So I just kind of draped it down around the button and that works just fine. Uh, before I push it down all the way, I do wanna make sure it's lined up. If I need to move it over, I can do that now before I push hard. And then that's stuck down and I can just take a piece of tape to stick down those extra wires, just, you know, so it's not so messy. And now I can grab some more foam tape. This is um, just a little bit for the edges there. Remember, it's already popped up one layer. And so I want to add a little bit of foam tape between the, the middle layer and the front of the card there. So I'm just gonna move it to the outer edges there. And now I'm gonna come in with um, some double thick foam tape because the um, that'll raise up the front of the card two layers. So our center layer, the, the tree line layer has some foam tape behind it and it'll have a little bit above it. And then once I get foam tape around the outside edges, for the top layer, the, the double thick foam tape, that will raise the top layer up, basically the height of two layers of foam tape. And you can see that the button works, and you can also see that we lost all of our grass that we put in initially, so I'm just gonna come back in and add that in real quick with those um, Copic markers again there. And then I decided that I wanted a couple of stars in the sky just to make it look pretty. Now it's sunset so you won't have a, a ton of stars. I, I didn't flick a bunch of white paint on there. I just want like five or six stars, that's all. So I added that and you can see that finishes up this card. I think it's super cute. I know my husband's gonna love it and he's totally gonna get that this was like how he proposed. <laughs> so. Thank you for stopping by and checking out the channel. If you'd like to see more light up cards today, head on over to the MFT blog post. There is not only uh, links to lots more inspiration, but there is a giveaway. We're going to give away a five pack of easy lights and also a $25 gift certificate to MFT. So make sure you comment over on their blog. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. After you're done checking out the other light up cards in this uh, group post today, come on back and check out a few more videos. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.